the camera has more properties than just a simple transformation. Let's take a look at some of those in the next composition called number two, depth of field. As the name of the composition suggests, we're going to take a look at the depth of field that's achievable by modifying some of the parameters in the camera. Now I've gone ahead and named this camera water cam, but if we double click on it, we'll bring up the camera settings. Here in the camera setting dialog box, you can see that there's a check mark already enabled for depth of field. When you're creating a camera for the first time, this property is not enabled, so you'll want to turn it on when you're creating a camera that will use depth of field. We'll click OK. Then we'll take a look at the camera options in the layer by typing AA on the keyboard. By typing AA, we're directed immediately to the camera options, and here in the timeline, you can see that there is a toggle switch for turning the depth of field on or off. Now, we can't animate whether the depth of field is on or off, but we can animate the amount of blur that the depth of field puts on our scene. At the very bottom here, we see our blur level. And with the settings that we currently have on the camera, our blur level isn't enough to demonstrate the depth of field. Here, if we turn the depth of field off, then on again, you'll see that there's really no discernible difference with a blur level of 100. So we'll change this value to something much greater. We'll change our value in this scene to 600 percent. We can now see that the camera is focusing on octopus number two. And the further each layer is from octopus number two, the more blurry it will become. On octopus layers three, four, and five, we can definitely see the amount of blur increasing as the distance between those layers increases. You may be curious to find out how the camera is focusing on octopus number two. It isn't assigned by layer, nor is it assigned by our point of interest. Instead, layer two is in focus because our focal distance is set to 600. That focus distance is measured from the layer to the camera. So the layers, which are a value of 600 pixels from the camera, will be in focus. Now if we have this layer still selected, then hold down the shift key and type P, we'll open up the position parameter for the camera. Here we can see that the camera is 600 pixels back from the center of our comp. If we take a look at the top view for this scene, we can get a better understanding of how this focal distance is working. So at the bottom of our comp window, let's go ahead and select top view. In the top view, we can see the different layers of our octopus as described by these short colored lines. The octopus with the red label has a Z position value of negative 200. The one that has an orange label has a Z position value of zero. The third, fourth, and fifth are all spaced 200 pixels from each other after that. If we twirl up our layer for the water camera, then scroll down, we can see the five different octopus layers named taco one, two, three, four, and five. By selecting all of these, then typing P on the keyboard, we can see the position values and the Z depth for all of those. We'll type P on the keyboard again to conceal those position values, then take a look at the simple math that After Effects is calculating. Again, underneath our water camera, we can see that the position of the camera is minus 600 pixels on the z-axis, and if we close our transformation, we can see that the focal distance is 600 pixels as well. So 600 pixels added to the movement of this camera, which is negative 600, brings us back to layer 2, which is set at 0. If we select this camera layer, we can see that there's an animation for the position and for the point of interest, which only move horizontally during the course of the animation. If we switch back to our water cam view by using the escape key, we can click and drag in the timeline to see the animation of our camera. 